create an Empyrean loop. What I mean by that is I'm just going to, it's not a real loop, I'm just going to take a loop right here and do a loop through the wires there. So if I look at the cross section there, I've got a bunch of wires right here. Empyrean loop is like a Gaussian surface. Gaussian surface is a make-believe surface that you can do math through, and this is just the same the loop. We're going to use Ampere's law. The fact that if I add up the magnetic field dot delta EL, uh, that's equal to mu naught times the current enclosed. This is some length L, and I have in coils running through. So if my current is coming out of the board here, that means that for each of these, I have a magnetic field basically going around like that. So I have a magnetic field going this way and that way and basically going around counterclockwise. Current coming this way, magnetic field goes counterclockwise. In between the wires, I got a magnetic field going up and down, and so I have no magnetic field sort of vertically. So when I do my loop, I have some magnetic field here, some magnetic field like there. Uh, so why don't we just call this A, B, C, and no, I'm using B already. So let's go with one, two, three, and four, because I need to add up around an entire loop here. So V1 dot delta L1 plus V2 dot delta L2 plus V3 times dot delta L3 plus V4 dot delta L4 equals mu naught times whatever current I have flowing through it. Uh, oh, even in the calculus space course, I would write DL instead of delta L, but <laughs> so I, I, instead of having to like go to the, no, I, I can write it out for them too. Now I know that along this section right here, the magnetic field is zero, so because we have current, the magnetic field is going in opposite directions, and they cancel out. In the middle here, we'll recognize I also have another set of coils down here because if I look at a cross section outside of my loop, I have a bunch of coils at the bottom half with my current going into the board. It creates its own magnetic field. Well, the magnetic field it creates is going into the board is going to be going clockwise so that I've got a magnetic field that's going basically like this way and that way. Well, if my, there, if my distance here is small enough, then the magnetic field, my green magnetic field, is going this way. My yellow magnetic field is going this way. So outside of the loop, outside of my solenoid, my magnetic field is close to zero. So all I'm left with is the magnetic field inside. So the mag and it's in the same direction as my loop here. So V delta L, which is just the length of my Empyrean loop, uh, so I can actually write that better. DL is equal to mu naught times, well, however many wires I've got here, times the current flowing through it. Because each of these wires inside my loop here has its own current. It's all from the same wire, but it's all the same current. So however many wires I've got, I've got N wires. So this becomes, so my magnetic field inside the solenoid mu naught times N sub L by N over L times I, which is mu naught times little n I, where this is the coil density. So looking at these two, 
if I've got a few number of coils, I use this equation for the magnetic field. If I've got enough coils so that the length is significantly longer than the diameter, that's the magnetic field we want. And we'd be given coil density, or we'd have to measure that, right? Yeah, in the lab you will you'll take a certain length, you'll measure how many coils there are. Um, yeah, it is it it's fun. But in a problem we would be given in? Uh, I would be I would give you uh, length and diameter. It, it usually it's like I got two coils or I've got a solenoid. Right. And a solenoid is just that, right? Yeah, just a bunch of coils that are all lined up. One last bit on the solenoid. If my current is flowing around like this, like I have in my drawing here. My magnetic field is pointing to the right. This is my north end, this is my south end. And so, if you add, we can increase it. We got a muse of knot here, which is assuming I got nothing in the middle. But if I put some sort of rod that will become temporarily magnetized, uh, I put that in the middle and I can augment, I can boost, I increase the muse of knot, I can boost my magnetic field. And so that's how you can create a magnetic field. You take, uh, Take a battery, attach a wire to it, wrap a wire around some sort of core, attach the wire to it, and you get a magnet. And then blow it all up. Do not use this for evil, use this for niceness. Or you go to the dollar store and buy fresh magnets. Yeah, I think I can create a more powerful electromagnet than I can getting a fridge magnet from a dollar store. But I have not done that experiment, so who knows. Have a wonderful weekend. Uh, and I need to talk to two of you. Just so the world will never know what we talked about.